Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to Warrior Race Arena in Brighton, Massachusetts. It is a Sunday afternoon affair between the Hingham Harbourman and the Ireland and Spy Ponders in the third annual Catherine Malatesta Memorial Game. It's the first time this game has been played at Warrior after two years over at Matthews Arena over by Northeastern, where Northeastern plays their game. So we went from one of the coolest old venues in the nation to one of the coolest new venues in the nation. I'm Jake Levin. I'm alongside Mike Flanagan this afternoon on Color Commentary. Mike, welcome aboard, and boy, has this been a long time coming. It has been a long time coming, Jake. You hear that old vintage ESPN uh, hockey music in the background? This is a big game here today between two teams that really are fighting for their Super 8 lives. We'd love to get in and uh, make some noise in that Super 8 tournament come March. Today is by no means an elimination game, but each of these teams could really use a signature win, and they have history with one another. Arlington, en route to the Super 8 title a season ago, eliminated Hingham. Two games to none in the best of three series in the quarterfinals last year, and route to that title where they knock off Central Catholic. So a little revenge on the mind of the Harbormen as the game is underway. Hingham in their road red uniforms. Heading right to left across the screen. Arlington going left to right in their Alabama Crimson Tide knockoffs. Hingham's got one of my favorite uniforms in all of high school hockey here in Mass. They look just, it's like a mix of Cornell, Wisconsin, and BU. Just how simple it is. It's a great uniform. Good little comparison, Mike. Hingham coming into this game 9-3-5. and five. They've won each of their last two games, including 4 nothing last night over the St. John's of Shrewsbury Pioneers about 22 hours ago. So Tony Messina's squad... A little gassed after making this trip, but we'll see what happens. Arlington also on a bit of a winning streak. A one-game winning streak, to be fair. They beat Lexington on Friday night, 4-2, to in a makeup game that was supposed to be played last night. They wound up moving it up a day. Create a little space between that one and this one. Let's see if the fresh legs of Arlington play any role in that. Tommy Kornack in the neutral zone for the Harbin, one of their three captains along with Frankie Higgins and Marshall Perez. Marshall Perez, if that name sounds familiar, this is his fourth year on the varsity for Hingham. He scored the game-winning goal in the Division I final against Harlan and Catholic at the TD Garden his freshman year. Nice little career there for Terrace. Yeah, not bad. He's a quarterback as well for the Harbin, and he plays lacrosse, so he's already won two state championships in his high school career, one in hockey. One of the cross. Here's Terez now low in the circle. Tried to center it over towards Clark in the slot. He was backhanded to the corner. Arlington the breakout. That's Brendan Jones. Knocks it off the skates of Caleb Wooden. Jones followed Wooden. Holly Curran over there in the corner for the Spy Ponders. A turnover created by Jones. Took it right off of Wooden's tape and Robbie Kornack makes an early save. Big save there by Kornack, stopping a point blank opportunity for Jones. A couple of veteran goaltenders in this game. Robbie Kornack, his second full year as a starter for the Harbin, now a senior. There's a wrister from Jacob Clark and a save by Jack Pennard, the Arlington goaltender who was a Super 8 champion a season ago. Is their primary goaltender. Could be an odd man. Almost an odd man rush there for the Harbin. The puck was flipped out of play. Face off upcoming in the Hingham end. Jim Clark of In the Slot, the Boston Herald's Clarky. fantastic high school hockey blog, is in the building today for this one, so you know it's a big game. Great guy, great writer, love reading this stuff. And he will be joining us between periods to talk some shop and what this game might mean, what a win could do for either team, what a loss might mean for either team. You look at the RPI, the computer numbers, Hingham has the number six RPI in the state right now amongst Division I teams. Arlington at number 10. You do the math, 10 teams make the Super 8. Not that it's strictly by RPI, but that does matter. There's John Sullivan for the Harvard. Got tripped up a little bit in the circle by Tyler Callahan. Clean play. Sent around the edges by Robert Koslowski. Koslowski behind the net to his partner, Callahan. Callahan goes up ice to Hanley. Man, Arlington is so smooth on that breakout. They have such good transition games. It's no wonder they were able to go for a deep championship run in the Super 8 last year. The two teams you see on the ice are two of only three programs in the history of Massachusetts to win a Super 8 title. One of those great trivia questions. Hingham won theirs back in 2010, Arlington last year, and Redding was the first to do it in 2008. It's a 
tournament that's normally dominated by those Catholic Conference teams. It's good to see the public school teams starting to finally get some juice going and uh, make these deep tournament runs and win some titles. Last year was the first year in the 26-year history of the Super 8 that there was not a school from the Catholic Conference in the championship game. And I know Central Catholic does have Catholic in its name. However, they play in the dual chance. Turnover. That was Max Garrity Yanger created a chance atop the slot for Arlington. Big save right there. Bobby Kornak. Ready for the challenge. Joe Jacobs along the edges. Can't get it clear. Anthony Stanislaso kept it alive for the Spy Ponders. Stanislaso, a senior now. He's been a member of this varsity team in Arlington for all four years of his career. Arlington back in the Super 8 two years ago for the first time since 2003. So the program really going to new heights with John Missouri as its head coach. Going to get an icing here. Going to the Hingham attacking end. Just a little bit more than four minutes gone by in this first period. That was a big save right there by Kornak. Point blank opportunity in the high slot. Turned aside with the left pad. Kornak, the latest in the lineage of great Hingham goaltenders. He was preceded by Matt Personetti. Guided Hingham to that Division I state title in 2015. Up by the great goalies and Kingham Lord, Nate Egan, also wore number 30 for the Harbin back in 2008-2009. It's Derek McInnes, who quarter, I should say quarterback, backstopped Kingham to their Super 8 title in 2010. Puck loose around the Brooks logo and a turnover for us. Here's Joe Shesherick. Shesherick in. Missed the net. Turnover in front. Cully Curran a shot. Kornak falls on top of it. Jeshering, so close. Puck just dribbled right off his stick right as he was about to tuck it past. They, out, they outstretched Kornak on the right side right there. Some, some lackadaisical play by the Harvard in the neutral zone there, Mike. Yeah, that was a little bit of a, some sloppy play, but, you know, luckily for Hingham, they were able to catch, or Hingham, they were able to catch a break right there. The puck slipping off the stick into the corner. Rebound covered up by Kornak. Face-off still a 0-0 game. Right in front, Kornak, Rob Shesherek. Point blank range yet again, Kornak. Couple big saves right off the bat. Three on that shift alone for the Spy Ponders. He also denied Kelly Curran. It's saw a Derry Keneally shot whiz past him and hit the end glass. Tough shift for Shesherek. I mean, you're not going to get two much better scoring opportunities than that. Came on the same shift, a breakaway, turned aside, and then point blank right in front of the net. Great couple saves by Kornak. Draw one by Alex Adams. Trevor O'Brien, rather, is looking back to Mike Carroll. Arlington setting up, shopping the attack and end. That shot's blocked off the body of Clark from the stick of Jay Maskey. Anthony Missouri, sophomore now, the head coach, of, uh, son of head coach John Missouri. Carroll in his own end, trying to shove it around the perimeter for Clark. Scrum on those near half boards. Settled by Maskey. He's going to lob it back into the Arlington attacking end. Kornak behind his own net. Sends an outlet towards Terez. Terez gets the outlet up to Clark, who's going to try to chase it down off the sidewall. Couldn't get there in time. Kornak joins the fray. Kornak going coast to coast. Center hit. It was Kennard, who may have gotten a piece of it, as it deflected to the corner. Clark going to retreat and try to cut off the angle of Missouri. Missouri stopped it with his thigh, followed to the end wall. It's Terez for the Harvard, has to be aware of Mick Callahan. Callahan hammered off the play by Tommy Kornak. Terez, some contact at the far half boards. Kornak with a puck in the corner. We have a player without a stick. I believe a delay call is coming against the Harvard. Terrez playing without a stick. He just blocked a shot. That one whizzes by Kornak again. I don't think Arlington knows that there's a penalty upcoming. They didn't even yank the goalie off there. So it could have had a six on four or six on a de facto six on four with a guy without a stick. They will now get a true five on four. Is somebody going to the box for the Harborman? Looks like it's going to be Mike Carroll, the junior defenseman. Two minutes. Hook. It's going to be a hook. Penalty comes at 6 12. Not only did he get called for a hook, but he lost his stick. Tough shift. 6 12 of the first period. So here's the hanging penalty kill. Our first look at the Arlington power play. It's brought to you by the Monotomy Grill in Arlington. We'll tell you more about them as the game continues. Missouri working tight spaces up top with Brendan Jones. Took a tumble in the corner. Cully Curran down there as well for the Ponders. Nice keep. 
Will Kenny looked for the clear, and that was Jack Simon at the far point. Kept it alive for Arlington. That's Joe Jacobs throwing his hip around, Holy. and the puck nearly hit some fans. Yikes. They weren't even paying attention. The Monotomy Grill is located on 25 Massachusetts Ave in Arlington, Massachusetts. Contact, contact us at 781-648-1775 or email them at contact at monotomygrill.com. Holly Curran on the draws, held in by Frankie Higgins. Will Kenny with some room to run shorthanded. He's over the red line, going to dump it in and track it down. Pennard, first one there for the Ponders. Sent it away from Kenny, and it's Curran with Higgins right on top of him. Chipped it over the stick of Higgins. Getting in line is Jones. Jones trying to work around Wood. Jones still with a puck. Bustled off the play by Joe Jacobs. Anthony Missouri up top, but he lost it. Has to be wary of Kenny doing an excellent job killing off this penalty. That's now two shorthanded rushes he's created. Not so much a rush, that one. It's just killing off the clock. It's a great shift right there by Joe Jacobs. He won the final from the puck behind the net, got it out, and his uh, fellow penalty kills were able to make the clear. Wood tried to throw a home run pass in the vicinity of Perez, who will track it down to the corner. Anthony Stanislaso hooking up Perez. That's got to be a penalty right there. It is Mike, the official might be a five side. On, might, be, might get two penalties. He was buried from behind. It was the hold in the stick, and then uh, I believe it was Mike Callahan who came in and buried him from behind. Callahan going to the box, so it's going to be four on four for the next 34 seconds. Penguin will get a one minute, 26 second power play afterwards. Yeah, we're going to get two penalties here. We're going to get a hold in the stick and we're going to get a hit him from behind. Anthony Stanislaso, good eye, Mike. So it's now, Hingham goes from being man down to man up. Four on three, that's some wide open ice. Arlington has five skaters out there. Arlington's going to have to get some guys off here. I don't think they're even aware that they have two penalties. Frankie Higgins on the draw for the Hardman in the attacking end. Hingham hasn't had many shots on goal yet. They are bound to get some now. A one-man advantage for now, and it's going to be two-man advantage in about 25 seconds. But the Spy Ponders get a clear. This is a huge opportunity for Hingham right here. They have to make do. Get the puck in, set it up, wait for your guy to get out of the box in 10 seconds. Jake Higgins had it in the crease on the goal line. It was knocked away by Cully Curran. Good keep by Keith. Clark Jake Perez Clark. to Higgins. Higgins atop the slot, stick handling, goes over to his brother, Frankie Higgins. Five on three now. Penalty's up. Frankie Higgins, a wrister, and a pad save for Nard. Marshall Terez collects the rebound in the near circle. Went over to Jake Quilty, back for Terez. Perez Arister blocked by Maskey. Maskey pokes it free, and it's a foot race to the puck, and Jake Higgins is too quick. Boyd's an odd man rush for Arlington, a shorthanded five on three rush. Jake Higgins stick handles, goes to Frankie Higgins atop the slot. Cully Curran fell down but knocked the puck away. Frankie Higgins goes over to Clark, back up top for Jake Higgins. 52 seconds left to five on three. Terez atop the slot, back over to Clark. Clark for Terez, rips it, and it's well wide. Rebound tracked down by Clark. Jake Higgins off the slot again. Arlington go with a triangle. A shot to save by Penard. Perez will track it down in the near corner. Hingham Hing really likes to overload that center of the ice with bodies. Perez a shot and a glove save Penard with 5.52 left in the first. Half a minute to go on the two-man advantage. It looks like they run a little bit of a mix of a shooting power play and an overload. They have uh, two guys constantly in front of the net creating traffic and uh, you know, they had some great, pretty quality scoring opportunities. Maybe, maybe you'd like to see them move the puck up along the wings a little more there and create some uh, better opportunities, some one-timers. Hangham will send out some fresh personnel to try to make this opportunity not go to waste. Kornak at the near point. Skates out to the middle. This is down for Trevor O'Brien. A wrister was blocked. Kept alive by Clark. Goes to the far side for Quilty. Will be a diagonal pass, getting his stick in the way was Cully Curran. Make that Missouri. Now Kornak a shot in the deflection, high off the end glass. O'Brien curls back atop the circle. 
Going to leave it for Frankie Higgins. Five seconds a minute on the power play. Looks like Arlington's going to make the kill. Another block for Missouri, and it's back to five on five. Higgins still in the attacking end. O'Brien in the middle. It's picked up by Quilty. Would have been a good play if it were soccer. Big hit. Bodies collide in that far circle. O'Brien takes a check from Jack Simon. Hingham still in the attacking end. A shot went off the side of the goal. Simon gets the clear. It'll be icy, but a great job by the Spy Ponders, Mike. Unbelievable kill by the Arlington, uh, Arlington PKers right there. Great kill. They were blocking shots. They got in those shooting lanes. I mean, the pucks that did get through got deflected up above the glass. Great kill. Five minutes even to go in the first period. Arlington has a little bit of momentum after killing off a five on three that lasted for nearly a minute and a half. That's a huge momentum boost right there for Arlington. Huge momentum boost. Here's Joe Sullivan for the Hardman. Down low, kick save. Pinard still loose in the slot. Pile of humanity down low. Nobody can see the pocket. Pinard fell on top with the glove. Great little uh, net mouse scramble there. Good recovery by the goaltender of Arlington. Jack Pinard sprawled out on all fours, was somehow able to reach back with that blocker hand, looked like and grabbed the puck and iced the puck for a whistle. Down went Joel Hanley. Joe Jacobs got an elbow in the way. Arlington wanted a call, they won't get it. Sullivan across from Minkin, a shot save, Pinard rebound. Tim Carroll couldn't get there in time. He had about half the net open. There's also a defenseman in the way. So we're going to get another penalty here, Jake. This is against Hingham. Down went Drew Malatesta. He draws what should be an interference, I would imagine. And it's going to be against Joe Jacobs. Yeah, he played a little game of chip and chase up there. He chipped it along the boards, tried to beat his man. And uh, Joe Jacobs was, uh, I thought he made the right play. It was just, Puck was probably away from the Arlington player for a little too long for him to go make a hip check like that. So Arlington's going to head to the power play here after killing off that five on three. Chance to uh, get a one goal lead in this hockey game at 424 remaining. Interference, the call at 1036 of the first period. And shorthanded again. And Merch. This is Jake Higgins up the near wing. Higgins slows things down. A shot. Glove save. Pennard. Jake Clark ready for the rebound or the deflection. And we'll get an attacking end draw. Always good to have when you're shorthanded. They're going to change up some of their personnel shorthanded. Looks like Frankie Higgins, Jacob Clark going off. Tommy Kornak avoiding a clean breakout for Arlington. Now it's settled by Terez in his own end, and he redirects it the length of the rink. Giving chase Will Kenny. Pennard, I'm not sure he was aware of Kenny, but Anthony Missouri ready to knock the puck away. Minute 21 to go on the man advantage for Arlington. It's John Gallagher skating out of the shadow of his own goal. Slow pass up ice to Jones on the near wing. Gains the line, slow plays it. Sends it out on top, hope free by Terrence. And it's a foot race to the puck, which he will opt out of. Missouri skates back, Terrence did his job and went off for the change. End of the shift, he was gassed. Good play by Terrence. Jones up the near wing again. It's some traffic in front of the hanging bench. Poke free by Clark now. Here comes Clark. Clark in. Clark to the back. And saved by Bernard and hit off the post. I think it went stick belt to uh, crossbar and out. Tough break for Clark and hit the hang of Harbin. Almost a shorthanded goal right there. What a fantastic penalty kill right now for Hingham. Making up for not scoring on a five on three. Arlington yet to have a shot on goal on the man advantage. And Jake Higgins keeps it in Arlington's own end with only 20 seconds left on the power play. Joe Jacobs will be coming out momentarily. Hingham has the momentum. Well, as good of a penalty kill as you could ask for by Hingham. And uh, as far as the Arlington power play, about the exact opposite. Haven't been able to generate much in the Hingham end. Hingham's been making all the right clears, and they had the better, better scoring opportunities throughout that two minutes. Penalty's now over 2.20 remaining here in the first period. Cheshire egg for Leosa. Shot goes well wide. At the lab by Stanislaso at the near point. Behind the net, it's Carroll. 
Carroll for Minkin. Minkin flying up the right wing with a little pep in his step. Arista right into the gut of Pennard. Hit him around the collarbone. A stoppage. Two minutes even left in the first period. Two minute warning, everybody. These two teams well acquainted with one another. As we said, they played in the Super League quarterfinal best of three series a year ago. The best of three series of which are no more. And I'm sure we'll talk about that when Jim Clark comes on between periods. Absolutely. We'd love to hear his insight on the field of, uh, considered a field of 10 at this point, or is it considered a field of eight? I'm not sure what to consider those uh, play-in games. Well, it's weird, because you're playing with house money. There is a bid for him. All right, it's going to fall on top. Because even if you lose, you get to go back to your respective sectional tournament. And exactly. I think that's why teams like Walpole and Marshfield last year were playing with house money because they made the Super 8 for the first time in program history. And nothing's going to change that, even if they lost. And then when they won those play-in games, it was, oh boy, everything from here is great. Exactly. And Walpole still almost beat BC High in the best of three. They were the only team to win a game. They wound up losing the series. Yeah, that was tough. That was a tough uh, tough stretch of losses for Walpole right there. They were about an overtime, and a, they had a penalty shot in that third game in overtime. They were a penalty shot away from moving on, and they had two chances to win in that shootout. They couldn't pull it out, though. That Cam Martin overtime goal against CM. Oh, my, one of my favorite moments of uh, all of last year watching that game. No Cam's a good buddy of mine, and that was great to see him score a goal like that. He'll remember that for the rest of his life. Absolutely. Here's Jake Higgins for Higgins. My shot by Penard again. Two great defensive teams, to nobody's surprise. Hingham has given up only 24 goals on the season. Arlington only 29. Both teams play ridiculously tough schedules. Hingham even tougher, being an independent. Arlington does have to play its league schedule, but boy, do they challenge themselves outside of the middle sets, where there are some tough teams, like a Burlington, a Redding, and whomever else you can think of. Sure, we'll be talking about Burlington when Jim Clark comes on in terms of public schools getting ready for the Super 8. Absolutely. I'd love to hear his thoughts on Reading, too. What, what on earth happened to Reading this year? They were supposed to be a real contender up in the uh, up on the North Shore for a Super 8 bid, and they seem to have uh, fallen off a little bit in the second half of the season. Half a minute to go in the first period, and Arlington was in zone time. Kornak elevated, couldn't catch it with his glove, but he dropped it in front. Kenny able to prodded away from Brennan Jones at the far point. Sent along by Keneally. No icing. It's Tommy Kornack behind his brother's net. Sent it to Frankie Higgins. A bit of a miscommunication or something must have happened there. Kenny bounced over his stick. Stanislaso, who is going to bleed this clock down to the buzzer. And we will head to the locker rooms with this game tied 0-0. Very good first period. We expected nothing less between Hingham and Arlington. I will tell you about some of the people who made this game possible today, such as the Monotomy Grill. Our vision for Monotomy Grill and Tavern is to bring the tavern concept back to the town of Arlington by creating a rustic grill capitalizing on the coziness of a brick house, featuring fireplace, open kitchen, exposed beams, large plank hardwood floors, and historical artifacts and photos. Fostering a loyal following will be the key to our success. So we welcome you to join us on Facebook for special news, special offers, and exciting events. Located on 25 Mass Ave in Arlington. Contact us at 781-648-1775 or contact them uh, on email at contact at monotomygrill.com. And by Highview Custom Builders. Highview Custom Builders, founded in 1990. Highview Custom Builders has overseen countless home renovations across the South Shore, Metro West, and beyond. From a simple fix-up to a full-scale rebuild, Highview Custom Builders is the area leader in designing your dream home and making it the very best it can be. To learn more, contact Steve at HighviewCustom at Hotmail.com. And by Full Spectrum Benefits. If you're on a business, big or small, now is the time to engage the team at Full Spectrum Benefits. There is no more time for business as usual. Medical premiums are skyrocketing and employees get confused in the alphabet soup of healthcare. These guys get it. With over three decades of employee benefit experience, 
The Full Spectrum team will help you deploy an employee benefit strategy that allows you to focus on managing and growing your business. You spend a lot of money on benefits, they should not be a burden. For a free consultation, call Bill Higgins at 617-872-9944 or visit their website at www.fullspectrumbenefits.com. All right, end of the first period of play. No score between Arlington and Hingham. Jake Levin alongside Mike Flanagan, Pat Serio on production. We're going to take a short break, and when we come back, we'll be talking the Super 8 and all things high school hockey with Jim Clark. Keep it locked at MyHockeyLive.com. All right, folks, we're back here on My Hockey Live. Jake Levin alongside Jim Clark of the Boston Herald. You can follow him at in the slot. That is at in underscore the underscore slot. And we are going to forgive his UMass hat today. But, uh, <laughs> all right, Jim, let's talk about a different kind of bracket. You know college basketball is on my mind, of course. But uh, let's talk about the Super 8 here. And uh, it's getting down to the nitty-gritty time. Only about two weeks left of the regular season. Less than that, really. Who do you think is the number one overall seed in the Super 8 if it were to be seeded today? I mean, I, you know, even though Central Catholic lost to Waltham the other night, I think you've got to still leave them at number one just based on their body of work and the teams they've beaten. You know, they've beaten all the teams behind them. They've beaten BC High. They've beaten Pope Francis. They've beaten St. John's Prep. You know, other than one hiccup or a road game, a tough league game, and a, a tough rank against Waltham, you know, you, every team's going to have something like that over the course of the season. I, I point out all the time, it's been 20 years since the team has been able to run the table in boys high school hockey. So it's, you know, you can't can't begrudge a team for a hiccup like that at any point in the season. So, um, yeah, I got I to gotta lean Central Catholic at this point, definitely. So speaking of Central Catholic and the team that beat them, Waltham, is that enough of a signature win to get the train rolling on them, at the very least getting into a play-in game? I know they have three losses, I believe. Yeah. Is that too many out of the DCL MVC? And if it is, does that Central Catholic win trump the rest? We'll see. I mean, I think it's enough to keep them in the conversation at the very least. Um, you know, had they lost that game, I think it would have been easy for the coaches maybe to remove them from the board. Because um, I don't think, you know, trying to remember the schedule off the top of my head, I don't think they really have uh, any marquee matchups remaining on their schedule. Um, so, you know, that being the biggest win on their, on their schedule, you know, it'll definitely keep them in the conversation. You know, they had a tough loss to... Um, North Andover was a, was a pretty good Division II team, but that's a, the kind of a game that, that, that people look at. So, you know, those things might balance themselves out a little bit. You know, quite frankly, I'm looking at it right now, and, and you know, I'm struggling a little bit to try to find, you know, who's going to be in those 8, 9, 10 spots. I think you just got a lot of teams that have, you know, various warts here and there, teams that have beaten each other, you know, teams that have beaten this team, lost to this team, which lost to this team, you know, that whole slippery rock argument that you got going on. Um, you know, but that happens every year. I think that you start to get to this point in the season and you kind of have to not ignore like one or two results, but you kind of have to take the whole body of work and see what a team has done over the entire course of the season. Not to put too much stock on one particular game, whether it was a win or a loss, and you know, and just go from there. Two teams playing today, Hingham and Arlington. I'll ask you one more question before I hand off to Mike Flanagan here. Is this a win and in game for either of these teams, or can they still pick up more victories with the rest of their schedule? I know Hingham has BC High on Saturday yeah. in the first round of the Buddy Ferreira, and I, I'm just envisioning Hingham, if they were to go on and win today and beat BC High, I would think that punches their ticket. But what if they somehow lose today and lose to BC High? I, I don't think Hingham's really got anything to worry about. You know, They've got enough really good wins. You know, Beating St. John's last night like they did, um, you know, and some of the great ones they've had over the course of their schedule. And they played a really tough schedule. You know, you look at the three losses they have. You know, they lost to the Prep, they lost to Central, uh, Central Catholic, and... Um, St. Mary's. St. Mary's, right. And, and, you know, St. Mary's is an interesting team because they're a team that's kind of had a couple of bumps along the road, but they have two or three really good wins on their legend now. So, um, yeah, I, mean, I don't think Hingham necessarily has anything to worry about. I think Arlington, this is probably a bigger game for Arlington than it is for Hingham at this point. You know, Arlington's got a good win against Austin Prep that they can kind of hang their hat on. You know, but they lost to Burlington. Um, they had the loss early in the season to BC High. So I think this is one that Arlington would really like to be able to grab um, going into the next couple of weeks. All right, I'm going to let Mike uh, ask you a question here. Sure. Jim, uh, nice to finally meet you. All right, Mike. Big fan. No problem. Thank you. I uh, just wanted to hear your quick thoughts on uh, maybe some non super eight teams that, that started off uh, season a little strong, like Severian, Redding, Malden Catholic, and then they you know, played by injuries. And if 
anticipated towards the end of the season. What are your thoughts on them as far as getting into the Division One State Tournament and making some noise? Well, it's going to be real interesting to see. I'll start with Malden Catholic because obviously they're on the brink. They, they're basically in playoff mode right now where at best they can afford one tie the rest of the season. Um, and, you know, they've got a makeup game against Fairfield Prep, which they haven't rescheduled yet. Then they have to go out to uh, Springfield next week and they, get a, uh, they start with St. Mary's, I believe, and then they would have to play either Pope Francis or Central Catholic. So they can't lose another game or else they're out of the tournament completely. It's very similar to what happened uh, with BC High probably eight or nine years ago and then with Catholic Memorial um, you know, three or four years ago. You know, those teams play brutal schedules. They, let's face it, I mean, they, 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 they face the iron of the iron. Um, but you know, at some point you have to win some of those games too. So MC is sitting there at five, eight, and three right now. Um, you know, they play Braintree tomorrow night. That's not going to be an easy game because Braintree, you know, they're, they're kind of fighting a little bit just to, to stay above the 500 mark. So, um, you know, it, it's going to be real, real interesting to see what happens with MC. Is a variance very, very similar. And same with CM. All three of those uh, Catholic Conference teams below PCI and St. John's Prep are kind of sitting right around the 500 bubble right now. Um, so they really need to take care of business just to make sure that they get into the, you know, clinch a spot in the tournament before they can even worry about whether they're going to be in the, the Super 8 conversation. And I think Reading is probably very similar, you know. Um, you know, Reading's going to have to go down to Falmouth and play in the Buddy Ferreira tournament next week. You know, they get, I don't want to say they get the easier side of the draw, but they're on the side with uh, AC and Archbishop Williams and Falmouth as opposed to being on the BCI Austin Prep Hingham side. Um, you know, so it, it's funny how that works out every year. But, you know, I'm sure Reading would like to put together, you know, three or four decent wins uh, going down the stretch and, you know, kind of get some momentum going into the playoffs as well. But, you know, that's why this time of year is fun. There's, just, there's so many different storylines. It's not just you know, seeing which teams are, you know, trying to solidify their Super 8 seeds, which teams are trying to, you know, potentially put themselves in the conversation for the wildcard games, and then, you know, which teams are still trying to play themselves in the tournament at all. You know, it's, there's a lot of different things to watch. Awesome. All right, folks, that's going to do it for us. He is Jim Clark, Boston Herald. You can follow him at in the slot. That is at in underscore the underscore slot he is the joe lenardi of high school hockey and uh even better i would say so uh all right we will uh be back uh, really in a couple seconds here for hingham Marley in second period jim thanks so much for coming thanks, on Jake. as always anytime thank you thanks mike take care the Hingham Hartman and the Arlington Spy Ponders and teams have switched sides for period number two. Jake Levin back alongside Mike Flanagan. Want to thank Jim Clark once again for joining us. Great guy. Periods. You said it perfectly. He really is the Joe Lenardi of high school hockey. He knows his stuff, man. Every team, any coach, any player, he knows the inside scoop. It's unreal. I'll let his UMass hat slide. Of course, Jim, a UMass alum. I am a URI alum, so we are... Uh, a10 rivals of sorts in uh, college basketball. Clarky had his moment a few years back. I'm having mine now, but uh, nobody out there listening really cares about that, so we'll go back to the play <laughs> on the ice. I was going to say, there's not really much to be mad at Clarky about with his UMass hat, considering URI state of uh, affairs with hockey right now. <laughs> another story for another time there, Mike. All right, here's Will Kenny <laughs> dancing through the circle and had his stick lifted by Jack Simon. Is that going to be a penalty against Simon? I think it will. Gonna get him for a hook. Tough little call right there. Looked like a clean little stick check. I couldn't really get a good feel for uh, where the stick ended up, but initially it looked like he just lifted his stick. Maybe he must have gotten a piece of his wrist or his arm. This Hingham power play brought to you by Highview Custom Builders. Highview Custom Builders since 1990 has overseen countless home renovations across the South Shore, Metro West, and beyond. Power plays were not the bread and butter for either team, it felt like, in the first period. Uh, Hingham got some good quality chances during their five on three, but Arlington made a huge kill, and then the Hingham penalty kill made a huge kill uh, towards the end of that first period. So we'll see if uh, teams made any adjustments here on this initial power play. This initial indication, no. Hingham had a little <laughs> zone time, and it was cleared right out by Cully Curran. Jake Higgins will lead the charge from his own end. Up ice to Terez. A little room up the near wing. He gains the line. Lost the puck. Gets back to Frankie Higgins. Curran right on top of him. Going behind the net. Stanislaso. But Frankie Higgins beat him to the puck. Stanislaso compensated over in the corner. It's a big old cluster. Quilty out in front to Jake Higgins. Through the circle and missed the net. That could have been a pass intended for Quilty. I think it was a pass. Didn't look like he had much mustard on that shot. 
Marshall Perez going to leave it for Higgins. Higgins around some screens and skates up the far side. A whistle. Feels like an offside against the Harborman with just under a minute to go on the man advantage. Penalty killing has been dominant in this game. Arlington killed off a five on three and then Hingham had two shorthanded chances in a five on four situation themselves a few moments later in the first. Quilty for Clark, for Terez, all on that far side left. Jacob Clark off the half boards, getting the stick in the way was Jones and backhanded out by Cheshire. I think both coaches are going to take a long look at this game tomorrow and say that they need to make some drastic improvements on the power play if they're going to make some noise in the Super 8 coming up. Marshall Terez gains the line for the Harbin and the circle. Jim Clark did tell us Hingham should feel pretty good about itself right now and that this game is even bigger for Arlington. Jake Higgins a shot between the legs. It is saved by Jack Pennard. I mean, as a number 10 team in the RPI right now, I'm not going to say this is a must-win game for Arlington, but definitely it helps to boost their resume. Maybe move them up into that 8 or 9 spot for the time being. And a couple more wins would certainly get them into the Super 8. But, uh, you know, definitely a big game here for both teams here today. Arlington has won three in a row against Hingham. It's a lackadaisical play by the Harbor. There's Brendan Jones short-handed. And that one goes up the elevator, shoot into the net. It 15 seconds left on the power play for Hingham, and despite a couple of shots on goal, it's not looking good. Yep, same same story as uh, early here in the second period as it was in the first as far as power plays go. Tough times getting the puck uh, during transition into the zone. You know, the, the penalty killers for Arlington have just really stepped up right here so far on this penalty kill. I mean, nine seconds remain. Looks like they're going to be able to make the kill. Tommy Kornack traded places with his brother and made a save there. I wonder if the Twins ever still switch on April Fool's Day. Now here comes Kenny through the neutral zone. Sends it in the corner. We're back to five-on-five five hockey. Joe Jacobs sent it along. Was looking for Joe Sullivan. Kenny around a screen. Fired and it was off the stick of Missouri. Tommy Kornack along the B center ice. Of course, this is the Boston Bruins' new practice facility. Great place. Is their fourth year here now? I want to say it's their third or fourth. Yeah, you're, that would be correct. Kornak shot off the mark, off the end boards. Drew Malatesta handles the puck. Malatesta up ice, looking to create a two-on-two -two centering pass for a hurricane and a save made by Kornak. Yeah, that's a great facility here. You don't really get to see the whole picture until you're actually inside or you're driving down uh, the mass pike you, see, you look inside maybe you see a couple guys skating around but you really don't get how see how great it is until you're actually in here it's a great venue great place to watch a hockey game but even better place to call a hockey game considering all the history that's hanging up in those rafters pretty good attendance at this game too here comes Tim Carroll, a wrister save, Pennard rebound, and down into the boards is going to be a penalty against Arlington. So we're going to get another interference penalty here. I mean, if you're Hingham, you're glad to get the power play, but uh, you know the way things have been going on this on the man advantage tonight. If you're Hingham, you may as well just you got to make some adjustments or something. You got to find a way to get the puck work down low, create some uh, secondary scoring opportunities there. What you're doing hasn't been working so far. Well, so we'll see if uh, the Harbin make any adjustments to their power play strategy here. That was A.J. Leosa who got hooked up the hanging player, and he's off for two minutes interference. Perez keeps the puck alive at the far side for the Harbin, centers it for Jake Higgins. Triangular pass to Frankie Higgins. Back up top for Terez. Great little spin move right there. After Frankie Higgins up top for Jake. Jake Higgins, a wrist and Jake Higgins on the power play from his brother Frankie and Marshall Terez with a secondary assist. 20 seconds into the power play, Hingham takes a 1-0 lead. Goal comes at 3.57 of the second period. Jake Higgins says, I see your struggles on the power play. Let me fix that real quick for you. Higgins with a beautiful shot up top. I'm not sure if it was redirected in front, Jake, but it definitely looked like that Hardman got some good traffic in front of uh, Bernard. Right in the back of the net, Hardman grabbed a 1-0 lead in a huge game here for both teams. Hingham with a 1-0 lead, and that one's on net. Stopped by Robbie Kornack. Hingham hasn't beat Arlington in neither of its last three opportunities. Their last win coming in the 2016 Super 8 play-in game. Hingham won that one 4-2. 
Since then, it's been all Arlington. Hangham looking to break that trend. And this has been a great game that has been played in the regular season the last three years. And wouldn't you love it if these, these two teams could meet up in the postseason yet again? I'd absolutely love it. I would love nothing more than to see Hingham and Arlington square off once again in the Super 8. Every time these two teams get together, it's a physical battle. As you saw today, a lot of, a lot of maybe a, lot, a couple of interference and some major hit pen, hitting penalties, but, you know, always a good, good match whenever these two teams square off. Ryan Davies took a shot that went off the stick of Joe Sullivan sky high that landed in the netting with 10.38 left in the second period. Anthony Missouri will take the draw for the Spy Ponders. Jake Higgins, the game's lone goal scorer. We're not giving Marshall Terez a secondary assist, at least not on the PA system. And I'm sure Paul McNamara is watching at home. Uh, in his words, that's an MHL assist for Marshall <laughs> Terez. Well, he started it off with that spin move to keep the puck in at the blue line. Exactly. So he definitely deserves some sort of credit there. I'm not sure if the puck was redirected in front or if it was uh, somebody else touched the puck before it got back to Higgins at the point. But uh, definitely that goal, certainly a lot of the credit belongs to Terry's on that nice little spinorama. Joe Sullivan down low, glances off the pads of Pennard. Caleb Wood near point, wasn't aware of Joel Hanley behind him. Wood reacts in time to keep the puck alive in the attacking end, dumped out by Arlington. Maskey gets it by Wood. Be an odd man rush here. Here's from Mikel Callahan. Callahan from Missouri. Missouri trying to go back to Callahan. Cleaning up the scraps is Patrick Finley. Finley up ice. Finley arrested, centered it. No shot for the Harvard. Finley, the son of Tom Finley, the Hingham High girls hockey coach. That was Callahan down low shot, save Kornak. Great little save by Kornak. Beautiful little touch pass. Callahan trying to go up to Joel Hanley. Kornak was ready for it. Callahan with a great little touch pass to set up the initial scoring opportunity. Great series of saves there to keep it one nothing. Hang them. Joe Jacobs almost lost the puck. Neutral zone, Jack Simon. Looking for Keneally. Keneally through contact, stayed with the puck. Finley for Wood. Collision through the official's crease. Neither team with some prolonged zone time in the last couple of minutes. Really not since that hanging power play goal. Ah, this, this, this has been a big game for the neutral zone. You know, well, both teams are sort of struggling to get that transition up the ice, but you know, we'll see if things start to balance themselves here and uh, as we start hit, head towards eight minutes remaining in the second period. Scrum in the Arlington, attacking end. Frankie Higgins through the trapezoid. Jake Higgins right back where it came from, behind the net to Mike Carroll. Trying to create an outlet with Kenny. It was intercepted by Keneally Arister, saved by Kornak, loose in the circle. Still loose, and Kenny Backhands it out of harm's way to Quilty. Simon retreating in his own end. Frankie Higgins right on top of him. He's tapping the ice with a stick to remind him of such. Here's Missouri. Through the neutral zone. Gains the line. Drops it. Up for Malatesta. We have a penalty coming against Higgins. Oh. Looks like they gave... Uh is that 14 for Arlington he's been in the box throughout this whole period he might, have, he might have gotten a misconduct for that hit from behind back in the first period I think what it was EJ Leoza I think what it was Mike was that was our first whistle since the power play had expired for Higgins or would have expired for ah. Higgins full two minutes and there were no whistles after Jake Higgins's goal mm -hmm. so that's that it's one of those uh Polarizing rules the MIAA should probably take a look at. Yeah, I've never, I, for, I completely forgot about that rule that you have to stay in the box for the whole two minutes. There's a shot from Jack Simon. What are your thoughts on that rule? I'd rather some hockey coaches or hockey players had a say in the rule, not just some administrators in suits, but. I agree. You know, that's just one man's opinion, Mike. What can you do? I'll back you on that. And of course, we'll be at MIAA headquarters in a couple weeks for the selection show, Super 8 selection show. 
Looking forward to it. Here's Missouri trying to re-kickstart this. Arlington power play dropped it for Callahan. Jacob Clark got his stick in the way. Not much in sync for the Spy Ponders right now. It's about a dominant of a performance by uh, team's penalty kills I've seen in a while. Hingham's always been a good penalty killing team. And Tony Messina now in his 10th year. Backhand on net. Kornak was in the right place at the right time. And now Will Kenny flies back up ice. Two on two. Kenny low. He's going to try to wrap it around. Kenny wraps out through the far circle. Uncorks a wrister and it was bouncing around. It wasn't a true shot. And Simon got his stick in the way. Long crisp pass to Keneally. Keneally can he get around the defenseman Danny Packard. And he couldn't at the last second. Packard hasn't played a lot of minutes tonight. Making use of him though. Puck is loose and Kenny that shot was Horikam with a wide open net in front of him. Oh, what a glorious opportunity right there. He knows it too. It's the stuff nightmares are made of. Oh, Drew Malis, Malatesta, wide open net. He couldn't get the stick on it in the right way that he wanted. He sort of did a little bit of a whiff. And he knows that he was angry as he came over to the bench. He knows he had an opportunity to tie that off this hockey game up. Back to five on five, and right out of the box is Quilty, who had a nice little exit for the box. He nearly broke in on a breakaway, and he also thwarted the Arlington rush before that. How about Packard. that? How about that flow on Quilty? That's some nice hockey hair right there. Also a lacrosse player in no related news. Absolutely no surprise. A head of hair like that deserves to be both on the ice and on the lacrosse field. Packard, an outlet for Sullivan. Through the official's crease. Well by Packard. Packard wearing number 44 that would belong to Steve Jacobs for the last three years. He graduated in 2017 for Hingham. One of the hardest shots on the team back from the blue line. Kept alive by Stanislaus at the far point. And now out of play. 4.35 to go in the second period. It's been an interesting period. It's been a little bit similar to what we saw in the first period, but the team's definitely getting some better opportunities in the power play. And on the shorthand, you had that breakaway by Arlington that hit the crossbar the, towards, the, um, towards the beginning of the first period. Towards the beginning of the second period, rather, sorry. And then uh, Higgins with the goal, give Harvin the lead. Arlington had a couple of good chances in that power play right there, but the Hingham penalty killers certainly stepped up and did their job. So I've been really impressed with Higgins' ability to sort of clog the puck up along the boards, all while there are other, the other guys out there clogging shooting lanes. Kornak behind his own net outlet for Sullivan leader for Tim Carroll Carroll trying to get around the defense curls up in the corner sets it to the point for Tommy Kornak Kornak on courts one save Pennard rebound out to the far half wall where Max Garrity Yanger was located the puck flies up high just underneath the Canadian flag regaining the zone is Sullivan that shot was blocked got a road glove on them caught by the faceoff shot someone's playing with one hand Here's Malatesta. Drew Malatesta over the blue line for the Spy Ponders. Took a shot from a low angle. And Almost snuck it in there. Hornak got a piece of it with his right shoulder. There'll be a mark there tonight. Sullivan in the neutral zone. Dumps it into the corner on the far side. Giving chase. Terrence Kong Cannon on the near wing. Finley joins the fray. This is the third, fourth line hybrid out there, it looks like, for Hengen right now. Wooden at the far point. Went into traffic. Jones looking for the clear for the spy ponders. And Wooden bullies him into the boards. Nice physical hit right there by Wooden. Wooden has some length. He is tall. Yeah, he's a big boy. Similar to some other players who are 33 in the past for Hangham. Here's Keneally trying to work around Joe Jacobs. Maybe a three on two here for the Harbourman. Paul Forbes, the freshman. Only freshman on Hingham's roster. A shot and a save by Pennard. Dock to safety by Simon. Two men down for Hingham behind the play so far. Arlington can get their act together at five on two. Missouri settles things up top. Throws it in the corner to Keneally, who missed Missouri. Is going all the way back in the near circle. Pennard right around the faceoff dot. He's going to leave it for Stanislaus. Frankie Higgins in on him. Gave off to Simon. Simon using the wall. 
Up for Keneally. Cross pass for Curran. Knocked away by Wood. Keneally saves it for the Spy Ponders. Works around the edges on the end wall. Leaves it on the backhand. Curran couldn't get there before Jacobs. Here's Perez. Soft outlet for Kenny. Kenny's going to give chase. Jack Simon trying to cut off his angle. Can't lift the stick. There's Joel Hanley in the corner. Kornak looking towards Kenny in that near corner. Back up top for Kornak. Across the ice. Jake Higgins gave it a ride. He's the game's lone goal scorer. Puck never left the ice. Kornak loved it down. Threw it towards the net. Blocked in front. That was O'Brien. Couldn't hang on. Spy Ponder's got a clear, but that is an icing with 85 seconds left in the second period. Transition's definitely starting to pick up here for both teams. Uh, hang them a couple nice uh, odd man rush opportunities. Same goes for Arlington. They came in on that three on two. Nice defensive play right there to keep the puck away from the Bernard net. Definitely some uh, a little bit different than what we've seen throughout the majority of this period with uh, some solid transition game going on. O'Brien won it to the half boards for Clark. Back up top for Jake Higgins. To O'Brien, a backhander kicked away by Pennard with the pad. Great save. Still loose in the corner. Pennard's been huge today for the Sky Ponders. The Spy Ponders. <laughs> I'm a Stonehill Skyhawk, so that's just sort of in my blood to call everything I see like that. Sky, Spy, same thing. Icing by Arlington. Well, our esteemed producer, Pat Serio, uh, put out a tweet with a graphic of the Sky Ponders <laughs> earlier today, so you're not alone there, Mike. Happens. 55 seconds left in the second period. It's a 1-0 lead for Hingham on Jake Higgins' goal at 3.56 of the second. Maskew will try to kickstart a last second rush for Arlington underneath the stick of Jacobs. Icing waved off as Malatesta gave chase. Jacob Clark gave it away to Brendan Jones. Malatesta looking for Jones. Clean intercept by Clark. Out on the far side. Uses the wall to fool Simon. Clark turns on the brakes in the corner. Got taken down right in front of the official who deemed it not worthy of a penalty, probably a good call. And he turned right at the last second. That's why the official decided not to call the penalty. Nothing the Arlington defender could do there. Offside called again to the Harbin with 17 and a half seconds to go. Draw will come right in front of the hanging bench where Tony Messina is located. Hard to believe this is his 10th season in charge of the Harbin. Unbelievable. Unbelievable tenure for him and Hingham. Spent many years there as an assistant coach under the late, great Garrett Regan. I remember my sophomore year at Tiberi and Hingham put together that magical Super 8 run. So it was incredible. That's how the second period's going to come to a close. Jake Higgins' goal, all the offense in this one through the first 30 minutes. We have 15 more to decide it. Between Hingham and Arlington in what has been yet another great game between these teams. And this game is being brought to you in part by Monotomy Grill. Our vision for Monotomy Grill and Tavern is to bring the tavern concept back to the town of Arlington by creating a rustic grill capitalizing on the coziness of a brick house featuring fireplace, open kitchen, exposed beams, large planked hardwood floors, and historical artifacts and photos. Fostering a loyal following will be the key to our success, so we welcome you to join us on Facebook for news, special offers, and exciting events. Located on 25 Massachusetts Ave in Arlington, contact us at 781-648-1775 or via email at contact at monotomygrill.com. And by Highview Custom Builders, founded in 1990. Highview Custom Builders has overseen countless home renovations across the South Shore, Metro West, and beyond. From a simple fix-up to a full-scale rebuild, Highview Custom Builders is the area leader in designing your dream home and making it the very best it can be. To learn more, contact Steve at Highview Custom at hotmail.com and by full spectrum benefits 
If you run a business, big or small, now is the time to engage the team at Full Spectrum Benefits. There's no more time for business as usual. Medical premiums are skyrocketing. Employees get confused in the alphabet soup of health care. These guys get it. With over three decades of employee benefit experience, the Full Spectrum team will help you deploy an employee benefit strategy that allows you to focus on managing and growing your business. If you spend a lot of money on benefits, they should not be a burden. For a free consultation, call Bill Higgins at 617-872-9944 or visit their website at www.fullspectrumbenefits.com. Two periods down, one to go. We'll be back in about 10 minutes here. Third period between Arlington and Higgins. Jake Levin alongside Mike Flanagan and Pat Sarah. Be live.com. Two periods down, one to go between the Hingham Harbin and the Arlington Spy Ponders. Hingham with a 1 0 lead over Arlington through 30 minutes. Jake Higgins, the game's lone goal scorer. A wrister from the point, they went in clean. Beat Jack Pennard on the power play at 3.56 of the second period. Jake Levin alongside Mike Flanagan, Pat Seri on production. Mike, that's all the offense we have, but it's still been a great game. Yeah, there has been a lot of offense, but there's definitely been some good opportunities. Both teams are starting to get their transition games going. Uh, starting to get a little more physical late in that second period right there. Hopefully we'll see some of that play continue and carry over here into the third. The teams have switched sides one last time. Hang them right to left. Arlen and left to right across your TV or computer or tablet or iPhone screens. And here come the spy ponders. Shashereg throws an outlet up to Derek Keneally. Keneally was trying to go back to Shashereg. Getting in the way was Tommy Cornett. Ali Curran lifts Kenny into the boards. Simon a shot that plays wide towards the corner. Still can't get over that name, Shashereg. What a great name. A lot of good names on this Arlington team. And here's Frankie Higgins. Around Simon, trying to center it for Quilty. Jake Higgins, a shot! And he got the deflection, and Pernard was ready for that one through all the traffic. Jake Higgins nearly made it a 2-0 game. Great tip right there by Kenny, looking like a true Alexander Rattleov out there. Great little tip. Will Kenny wear number 37, a number that's becoming more and more popular in high school hockey in this area, Mike? I can't imagine yeah, why. Yeah, I wonder why. Uh, a certain guy they might, might know, Trees Bergeron, he wears that number. Who knows? Number that you could see in the rafters, not only at the TD Garden, but of course here at Warrior Ice Arena someday. But, you know, let's hope that's not for another 15, 20 years. I mean, if he wins like the next 10 Selkie trophies, they're going to have to, you know? I mean, very good possibility the way he plays. Two way, to, two way forward mentality, just. Such a good penalty, penalty killer, such a good power play guy. So good passing the puck, plays with two solid wingers and Marshan and Pasternak. It's gonna be hard for him not to at least a couple, win a couple more Selkie trophies. This is an icing against Arlington. Good croquet shot by Jay Maskey right underneath Jones's legs. Hangman will get an attack and end draw. 13.47 left in the third period. I totally did not wear 37 when I played lacrosse at Stonehill. Just saying. Caleb Wooden near point. Aristers through traffic and Bernard with the glove again ready. Caught it clean. What was your go-to number? Well, 90. 90. Great number. I don't know why. No, no. Born in 1990, I guess. That'll do. Oh. So, it's my softball number, though. I never played these real sports that uh, <laughs> everybody else is talking about. See, I was like a bandwagon. I went with the number 11 from my early childhood, and like 9, and I got to high school. It was mostly 37. Big collision in front of the net. Oh, seven bodies down in front of the net right there. Like a bowling alley. Malatesta back up ice. Trying to throw it down low for Jones. Kornak was ready. I'm not sure Jones was for the pass. Great read, great look right there by Malatessa. Just get the puck to the net. Maybe a guy can bang it home on the doorstep. Unable to happen, but still nonetheless a good look. Trevor O'Brien, a shot at a low angle. And Hard got a piece okay. of it. Missed call right there. A trip behind the net. Kicked down by Wood. Up 
for John Sullivan. And Joe Sullivan in the corner, out to the slot. Shot blocked off the stick of Joe Jacobs. Here comes Mikel Callahan, the lone soldier, turned it over to John Sullivan. Sullivan in, Finn on the wrist for the second effort. He chips it up into the A on Pennard's sweater. Well, if what we've seen so far here in this third period tells us anything, it's that you're going to have to literally commit a crime in order to get a penalty. There are about four stick infractions behind the Arlington net right there that went uncalled on both teams. So we'll see if uh, either team gets a power play here the rest of this game. But I think the referees want to keep it at five on five. Short-handed situations were really all we had in the first period. Hingham and Arlington both did such a great job killing penalties. And then early on in the second, Jake Higgins, power play goal for the Harvard. Two on two, shot taken by Tyler Callahan, save made, Robbie Corning. 12 and a half to go in the third period. Just a quick look ahead. Arlington plays again on Wednesday night. They are at Winchester at O'Brien Rink. Hingham doesn't play again until Thursday, and they will host the Andover Golden Warriors. Well, I don't believe we're going to have either of those games on My Hockey Live. We are going to have plenty more Hingham and Arlington games. Uh, Hingham in particular, at least three more in the Buddy Ferreira Classic over the next week in Falcon. That'll be a good one. Hingham BC High on Saturday. Hell. That'll be a pretty decent one. I know you, uh, you're a big Falmouth, uh, Falmouth rink guy. What's your favorite place to call a game, isn't it? Falmouth rink is the best rink where a college or professional team does not play in the state of Massachusetts. I will say that. It's an unbelievable place. It's a great place to watch a game. We have 12 games there on My Hockey Live beginning next Saturday through the following Thursday, and that's an icing against Hengen. I remember uh, growing up playing youth hockey. You know, if you get that invite to that final tournament, it was a huge deal. It was a entire week. Usually, usually during February vacation, you'd head down there with your family on a Monday. I mean, if you're lucky enough to win a couple games, you stay down there till the next Sunday. It's a great, great experience. If you're a youth hockey program, I'd highly recommend trying to get your team into that final tournament. It's one of the most fun experiences you can have as a youth hockey player. Wooden for Quilty, back up top for Clark. Keneally trying to lead the charge for the spy pod. It's two on two. Keneally had Curran across it oh, to the right. Big Out in front with Shesherig. And Quilty assumes possession of the puck up ice. A little bump and dump with Stanislaso. Here's Kenny. Sent it towards the goal mouth. Pennard was out of the crease. There were plenty of defenders there for the spy ponders. Frankie Higgins will follow the puck to the corner. Knocked away by Keneally before he can make a play on it. Underneath the stick of Wilkin is bounced by, by Pennard. And there Keneally laid a big hip check in the corner back in the Hingham end. Towards the beginning of his shift. Got the guys on his bench going. Jake Higgins as everyone else changed up off the stick of Terrez. Up over the glass on the far side with 10.32 to go in the third period. I like how physical this game's starting to get. Guys starting to throw some hip checks. Guys starting to you know, make some extra physical plays behind the net. That's the type of plays you need to make in games like this. Sort of wear down the other team. Try to get that tying goal if you're Arlington. Or if you hang them, go up two and sort of put Arlington back up against the wall. Draw at center ice. One by Trevor O'Brien. O'Brien wearing that 26. Jack Hennessy war for a number of years for Hingham. He's now playing college lacrosse at St. Lawrence University. Uncovered in front is Jones and a pad save Kornak out at the point. Cheshire Eggs, pardon me, Davies shot was blocked. And now it's Terez in transition. Drop for Clark Arister and a save for Art. What a save from the blocker. Keeping this a one-goal game. Terra still looking for more. Trying to tuck it short side. And Pennard out in front. Stoned him with a stick and fell on top of the glove. 9.53 to go in the third period. Pennard saving the bacon for the spy ponders. I mean, he has to be cheating right there on that. He has to know that the puck's going to come back into the middle of the slot. And he knows that Clark's going to try to go at least up high when he goes down to that butterfly. Great save. Wooden saved it for the Harvard. 
out by Koslowski, not entirely. It was a good glove. Far point by Jacobs. John Sullivan in the official's crease. Took a body check from Simon. Bernard left it. Now it's Callahan for Arlington. Threw it out towards Tyler Callahan. Tyler Callahan low through the circle. Two defenders back. That's it. Score! Callahan with two defenders on him. Sullivan. It would trying to chip it away from him. Tyler Callahan would not be denied. He splits it through the five hole of Kornak, and it's a tied game. 1-1 one, one at 5.41 of the third period. Absolute mess of a goal, but this play starts and ends with Callahan getting the puck into the zone, fighting through a defensive poke check, just getting it to the net, and lo and behold, the puck takes a lucky bounce. The Sky Ponders get a little puck luck, and we're tied at one with nine minutes to go. Arlington regains momentum. Quilty quickly quashed for the Harvard. Ends it on goal. And our gloves it. 9.02 left in the third. Got ourselves a hockey game here, Jake. A tie in this game would do nothing more than further muddy the Super 8 picture. Yeah, that one of these teams is going to have to win if they're going to make Jim Clark and the rest of the uh, Super 8 committee's job a little bit easier. Remember, Jim Clark's not on the Super 8 committee. Correct, he's just the guy who recaps it. He should be. He should be, I don't know why he's not. Knows more than everybody else covered it. Knows more than anybody combined over there. Jake Higgins back in his own end for the Harvardman. Looking for Kenny. Frankie Higgins. Now Polly Curran in his own end for the Spy Ponders. Across the ice for Jack Simon. That's Joe Sheshereg. Poke free by Cornet. Oh, Will big he? hit! Oh, Holy Curran laying the hurt. Clean play with a shoulder. What a great hockey hit that was. I have no problem with hits like that. Clean hit. Guy's got his head down. You go shoulder to shoulder. Hope they never take hits like that out of the game. As long as they're not targeting the head, slow to get up on the back end is Trevor O'Brien. Exactly. As long as there's no head, head to head or head targeting, I'm totally fine with it. Jake Higgins up the middle, could connect with O'Brien, but Jacob Clark joins the freight and wrapping around the corner. Puck gummed up along the end boards. It's O'Brien, looks like he's okay. O'Brien shuttered off the play by Stanislaso. Terez, stick handles, gave it right to Malatesta. Malatesta from Missouri. Missouri atop the far circle and shot off the end glass, not on goal. Loud rebound for Clark, lining up the left wing. Clark in through the duck, shot, save it on a rebound. Perez couldn't backhand it home. Puck still in there for Hingham. That's Tim Carroll. Carroll over to the far corner. It's it back along the end wall. Anthony Missouri chipped it away and lost Clark's stick in the process. Perez with a puck, looking to the point for Kornak. Couldn't keep it alive. That was partly due to Brendan Jones getting his stick in the way. Masky in his own end for Davies. Off ice for Callahan. Luke Callahan. Game the line. Dump it in. Caleb Wooden. There's one there for the Harvard. Behind the net pass to Joe Sullivan. Out into no man's land. Two players jousted for the puck. It's Minkin. Looks like Arlington's adopting a 1 3 1 uh, defensive scheme here to try to avoid those odd man rushes for Hingham here in the late minutes. They don't want to give up a late, a late goal to uh, give up this crucial point that they need to stay in the hunt for a Super 8 berth. I do wonder if because Arlington is the defending champion, would they get a shot to defend their title? If all things are equal with, let's say, Waltham or St. Mary's Lynch, some other teams that are right on that bubble, I wonder how the committee thinks in those situations, and I don't know the answer. You know, I want to think that there's, no, you want to hope that there's no bias inside that room between those uh, MIA guys and girls that are uh, selecting the field, but you know, something tells me that if there's a defending champ that's on the on the cusp and there's a team that really hasn't been in in a couple of years, you know, you never know. Maybe maybe they'll give Arlington another shot if they end up at the 10 seed. Maybe they'll put a Waltham in or a wild card like Wellesley gets in. We'll see how it goes, but uh, you know, definitely a lot of work to be, a lot of hockey to be played, and a lot of work to be done by the committee. 
Ali Curran on the right wing. Dumps it in. It'll go off for a change. Kornak to Kornak. This is Tommy Kornak, the defenseman. Great puck out for Hingham. Ends it in wide of the goal. Koslowski knocks it out for Arlington. It's a fluttering puck, and it will die for an icing. Just barely. 5.39 left. 38 left. He just took another second off. What's a second period. matter, anyway? I get the feeling we're going to remember this second oh, when it came off. Oh, just a yeah, prediction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Clock goes in right as time expires. That'd be brutal. That's how things tend to go, though. Murphy's Law. Saw an empty net goal by Braintree with a second and a half left in their game against Norwood yesterday. It obviously didn't really affect the game. Got a player here without a stick. Frankie Higgins, a shot, a kick pad saved by Pinard. That's a big cover up by Pinard because one of his defensemen was without a stick. Now he's able to go back to the bench, get a new one. Back to de facto five on five rather than five on four with a guy without a stick. Hingham is amping up its intense right now. As you can hear, the guys on the bench are getting into it, banging against the boards. They know they uh, have a chance here. Frankie Higgins won the draw. Jake Higgins took a shot. Jack Bernard made the save. 5.19 left in the third. We'll reset and do it again. Frankie Frank. Higgins, <laughs> carbon copy. And there's Jake Higgins again. Got the deflection from Wood. Frankie Higgins is unstoppable in draws right now for Carbon. It's one at least, I believe, six in a row. Jake Higgins with a blast, and it was blocked by Derek Keneally. He is the Fogo for the Harbourman in lacrosse, so. His face-off prowess in hockey, not that it's a direct correlation, but it's it certainly can't hurt. He's got solid muscle memory, good hand-eye. Here he comes up the left wing. Frankie Higgins trying to get ahead of some defenders. Turns on the brakes, and he'll take his chance to do some zone time. And yeah. it's offside. Joe Jacobs not quite in the same line of thinking with Higgins there. Draw will come outside of the Hingham attacking end. 4.43 left in the third. A little tip right there at the blue line by Dominic Leoza by Arlington. Sort of just, made it just one inch closer. Gets out of the zone. Face off the neutral zone. Ooh. Puck goes up into John Missouri's bench. Should be a draw somewhere in the neutral zone. Likes like it's center ice. Yeah, looks like they're just going to go straight up to center ice right on the B. 438 remaining. Critical game here. Critical point up for grabs. Missouri against O'Brien on the draw. O'Brien gets the best of it. Wooden retreats all the way behind his own net with Malik Hesley in on the forecheck. Missouri takes a whack at it, prevents a Harvardman breakout. Clark chips it up high, and it went off the netting, it looked like, and the officials don't blow the play dead. Tony Messina saw it. I didn't see it. I didn't see it hit the net, but the, way it, it, the angle it took looked, looked a little weird. Anthony Missouri, rolling the run on the near side. Nice little move. Skates through the neutral zone, gains the blue line. Puck still in tow until it's poked away by Wooden. O'Brien assumes control. Dangerous pass in front, but nobody home for the spy blockers. Jacob Clark with room to run in the left wing. He's going to gain the line. Try to put a move on a defender. Gets cleared out to the neutral zone. Wooden. Laps it over to Jacobs, forward to Tim Carroll. Dumps it in, Pennard. He's going to leave it for Maskey. Maskey took it himself. Dumped up in the corner on the near end of the ice for the Harvard. It's Carroll trying to shove it towards the slot if he could. Minkin gives chase around the end wall. Davies first one there for Arlington. Nathan Callahan chips it out, and this will... No Not ice. being icing. Puck died. Rez was about to go across that red line. A little bit of a break for Arlington. Three minutes to go in the third period. Joe Sullivan flops it up high, and Minkin tried to knock it down. Instead, Simon plays it. Almost a big turnover there. John Sullivan had a little bit of room in front of him. Instead, it's Cheshire Trying to chip it out, looking for Callahan. Jake Higgins gets in the way. Jake Higgins over the blue line. Jake Higgins, a wrister. That's 
It's going to elevate into the protective netting. 236 left in the third period. The Nets are making their money here today, Jake. I feel like that's at least the 16th time we've had a puck go out of play. Just a few times. <laughs> protective netting all around this rink at Warrior Ice Arena here in Brighton. Beautiful new facility for the Boston Bruins. Dangerous oh play by Cully Curran. That is, they teach you that. That's Hockey 101 right there. Never cut the puck in front of your own net. No harm, no foul. Shesher egg. I think that'll still be a teaching point when he gets back to the bench. Quilty tried to throw an outlet to Higgins. Intercepted by Stanislaso. Bustled down by Kenny. Here's a whistle. We have a penalty coming. No, I believe it was just the. I believe the puck just went out of play. Neutral zone. Neutral zone draw. Looked like Kenny played a, played a little bit of a late hit there, but nothing to deserving of a penalty, I don't think. Clark comes up with the puck after Pernard couldn't handle it cleanly. Clark in the corner, back to O'Brien behind the net on the forehand. Missouri was able to wrestle him off the play. O'Brien being held on the half boards. Clark joins the fray, gave Missouri a bump. Hingham's got to find a way to get the point men involved here in the final couple minutes. That's the only way they've been able to generate offense. Here's Drew Malatesta with a chance for Arlington. Malatesta can't get around the length of Jacobs. Hung on to the puck, threw it a Callahan shot. Saved by Kornak. Missouri. Had to slow things down. Perez across the edge for Clark. Clark with room on the left wing. Clark's going to tee it up. Kick save Pennard. A minute 15 to go in the third. Could be a three on two here for the Skyhunters if they hurry. Chances at a premium now. Backhanders right there. Thinking wrap around was Malatesta. He lost the puck as he curled back out in the open. Quilty on the near side for Hingham. Quilty in. Quilty in the near circle. Took a shot, Jack Simon ruined it. Great play by Simon. Jake Higgins, Higgins lone goal scorer. Kept him alive at the near point, but Simon sent it out. Frankie Higgins at center ice. Out to Michael Callahan, gains the line for Arlington. Kenny has trouble getting a clear. Stanislaso near side, sends it right up into the grill of Joe Jacobs. He's okay thanks to his cage. Half a minute to go in the third. That's Joel Hanley down low, set in front. Knocked to safety by Jake Higgins. Absolutely massive hit down the corner. Here comes Kenny. Last good chance for the horror minute. Shot is well wide through the corner. Bowling pins in front of the net. Pennard a little slow to get up with Higgins right on top of him. Lobbed off the end boards. Pennard still slow to get up, but Higgins all the way back to their own end. Simon for Keneally. Keneally with three seconds left. It was blocked off the backside of Jake Higgins, and the puck will die in the corner. A 1-1 tie between Hingham and Arlington. Joe Jacobs took a bit. He, I'm not sure if he laid the hit or if he took a big hit down the corner, but he's a little bit dazed right now. They're not letting him. Looks like they're going to let him come out for the handshakes, but he's emphasizing that right knee a little bit. It's going to be something to, for the. Oh, he's not going to come out for the handshakes. He's just going to get some treatment, it looks like. Looked a little banged up after those final 15 seconds. Well, Hingham's going to need him moving forward with Andover on the horizon Thursday and then three games down at Falmouth. Well, to the surprise of absolutely nobody, this was another great game between Hingham and Arlington. The second tie in this series. The teams also tied back in the 2015-16 season. Hingham, of course, got the best of Arlington in that Super 8 play-in game. So Hingham still winless in its last four opportunities against the Spy Ponders. And I'm not sure either of these teams has done enough to get in a top six spot in the Super 8 a la last season when they played. Uh, Arlington was the three seed. Hingham is the six. But one can dream, and this tie is not going to hurt either of their chances. In fact, it'll only bolster Arlington's, I would tend to think. Exactly. It keeps both teams in it. You know, Arlington, they would have definitely preferred to get the two points here today, but staying at the number 10 spot for now isn't going to hurt their chances. But uh, on the other side, you really feel for Jacobs. Hopefully he's able to suit up in the coming days. Definitely not a good sign that, he's, that he can't go out there and take part in uh, handshakes. It looks like he's going to go out there now and stand with his teammates. But, uh, so 
have a little post-game ceremony because this is, of course, the Catherine Malatesta Memorial Game. Uh, Catherine Malatesta tragically passed away, I believe it was in 2015, due to a rare form of cancer. Uh, her younger brother, Drew, now a sophomore on the team, an outstanding player for Arlington, a Super 8 champion a season ago as a freshman. And so this is what these teams do. They did it the last two years at Matthews Arena, and now they have taken it across town here to Warrior, so we will uh, go quiet for the announcements. Folks, there you have it. You heard the player of the games awarded for each team. Hingham, 9-3-6. and six. Their next game is Thursday night against the Andover Golden Warriors at Pilgrim Arena. Andover, 8-4-2 and two in what's been a, a weird season, to say the least, for the Golden Warriors. Arlington is 10-4-3 now. They're off till Wednesday night. They play at O'Brien Arena against the Winchester Sachems, who are 10 Seven and one. Arlington maintains its lead in the Middlesex League Liberty Division. They're a couple points up on Winchester. I believe they can clinch the league outright, even with a tie on Wednesday night, although there are tiebreakers and things that uh, we are not made aware of. So who knows? Uh, Mike, it was an absolute pleasure working with you for the first time. I can't believe we've never done this before. It's a pleasure being here, Jake. Thanks for having me. I love watching some hockey with my dude. Certainly won't be the last time. I want to thank everybody for tuning in, as well as those who made this game possible, such as the Monotomy Grill and Tavern. Our vision for Monotomy Grill and Tavern is to bring the tavern concept back to the town of Arlington by creating a rustic grill, capitalizing on the coziness of a brick house featuring fireplace, open kitchen, Exposed beams, large plank hardwood floors, and historical artifacts and photos. Fostering a loyal following will be key to our success. So we welcome you to join us on Facebook for news, special offers, and exciting events. Located on 25 Mass Ave in Arlington, you can contact the Monotomy Grill at 781-648-1775 or via email at contact at monotomygrill.com. And by Highview Custom Builders. Founded in 1990, Highview Custom Builders has overseen countless home renovations across the South Shore, Metro West, and beyond. From a simple fix-up to a full-scale rebuild, Highview Custom Builders is the area leader in designing your dream home and making it the very best it can be. To learn more, contact Steve at HighviewCustom at Hotmail.com. And by Full Spectrum Benefits. If you run a business, big or small, now is the time to engage the team at Full Spectrum Benefits. There is no more time for business as usual. Medical premiums are skyrocketing. Employees get confused in the alphabet soup of health care. These guys get it. With over three decades of employee benefit experience, the Full Spectrum team will help you deploy an employee benefit strategy that allows you to focus on managing and growing your business. If you spend a lot of money on benefits, they should not be a burden. For free consultation, call Bill Higgins at 617-872-9944 or visit their website at www.fullspectrumbenefits.com. Higgin won, Arlington won. That's the final from Warrior Ice Arena in the third annual Catherine Malatesta Memorial Game. I'm Jake Levin for Mike Flanagan and Pat Serio on production. We'll see you Wednesday on My Hockey Live, Severian and Barnstable, and... Uh, 
There's talk of a second broadcast being added that night. Just follow us on Twitter at MyHockeyLive for the latest. Good night, everyone.